Thank you for joining us on Talent Talk. I'm your guest host, Chingaz. Today we are so pleased to welcome Mr. Griffin Cork to our little show. He is a actor, a director, a producer, and a tall person. I'm pleased to call him a friend. Please help me welcome Mr. Griffin Cork. Add to cart. There he is. Add to hey, cart. I, w I wish tall person was in more of my intros. Add a tall person. I was going to say a white person, but I thought, you know what? Don't do that. Just <laughs> don't do that. I think uh, with an Irish of a last name as Cork, the, the whiteness is, you can guess. <laughs> How come every effing show I've watched in the last, say, seven years uh, that deals with an Irish person or an Irish place, it's always there from County Cork. I swear to God, there was something we watched really? last week. Every effing show. There was something we watched last week, and there was a girl, and she had an Irish accent. And she said, well, I'm from County something else. And I'm like, how dare you? What? There's another how place in Ireland? You? Have you not noticed that? Well, yeah. it might be because, like, I, you know, I'm Irish, and I only, or part Irish or whatnot, and I only know, like, three places in Ireland, and Cork is one of them, Port Cork. We okay. went, or I didn't, but my family went to mm -hmm. Port Cork, and they got there, and no one gave a shit that our last name was Cork. <laughs> Are we allowed to swear on this show? I should have clarified. Yes, I'm allowed to drop one F-bomb per show, okay. and sometimes I hide it. Like, uh, my grandmother had this swear uh, she would do without swearing. She's like, oh, fucksy, wuxy, and it was fine. Gary doesn't no, catch that. I don't think that's fine. <laughs> hey, she was also Irish, uh, mostly British, but oh, uh, Irish when she got angry because her eyes would turn red. <laughs> and uh, it's just wow. how I remember her. Yeah, fucksy wuxy is very British. Yeah, I, but I believe a guest is allowed to swear as many times as they feel. I mean, again, it's not, you know what I mean? I could put you in the timeout room again. I was going to say, that's dangerous power. I feel like more people should have cared that our last name was Cork. If someone came to the city I'm in and was like, what's up, my name's Vanessa Calgary, I'd be like, <laughs> interesting. Do you know what I mean? Like, just like, hmm. Tell me more and less about yourself, Vanessa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the amount of syllables. I don't know. <clears throat> Yeah, interesting, man. Um, we're going away. <laughs> yes, I've, I've derailed your entire intro. I'm so sorry. No, no, man. Like, I wrote down, like, three notes. And Perfect. really, it's just, like, talk about him and not yourself, idiot. Like, that's really number one through three. <laughs> hey, listen, first of all, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this show. We're going to have um, um, uh, less questions, less audience participation. I'll be playing the audience for this. Perfect. So, really, just try hard. Yeah, Good. of course. Okay, thank, thank you for you. having me. Uh, I well, have a question, and yeah. only before we get into me, I'm trying to remember when you and I first met. I think it was on, uh, or we didn't really have a conversation. I think it was on the pilot of Huggergram. Dude, that's interesting. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess it was that, and I totally forgot about that, because the way I was, I was trying to piece it together... And mm -hmm. um, there's been a couple projects that sort of didn't, you know, haven't seen the, the light yet, which I remember right. that we worked on. But I was like, I remember you coming to some show uh, or, or an event, and it was myself and the and the the late great Garrick uh, Winston was there, and then Cliff Lickness was there, and we were kind of working the door, and it was this big, oh my god, theatrical. And I, were you there? And it was a dress up thing, right? It was fancy dress. We dressed like dancers. I think it was. Yeah, it was Stage of Stars and Screen, I want to say Third Street Theaters event. Okay. And I think this is the right one that I'm thinking of because I, I I remember this. I remember Garrick being at the door and he, he like yeah. patted me down like this <laughs> full bouncer. But we, my mother and I came dressed as, I think I was Cher. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't remember what you were, but I remember you were dressed like a lady. I'm like, that's a handsome lady, guys. Um, who's uh, who's I, Cher partnered with? Or was uh, Sun, Sunny, Sunny Bono? Sunny That's and right, because my mother came in like a pinstripe suit and drew on <laughs> stubble and had a cigar, and I Amazing. was Cher because I was taller, so I was in a blue dress and a black wig and flip flops, which really does Cher a disservice. But that's all I had. <laughs> yeah, I just remember oh, this kid's going to be something. Little did I know. Um, <laughs> well, because you're willing to go there, you know, you're willing sure. to go there. Um, we we left early because we were self conscious for sure oh, because no one else really there was one dude that like really dressed up as Iron Man but no one else really went as hard as we did and we went uh oh oh no maybe there was, was maybe another doll okay as an 
os- he was dressed up as an Oscar, like he was full gold. That was oh, pretty good. Maybe, man. But I remember there was another feller, another feller uh, dressed as <laughs> Betty Boop. He was full on Betty Boop. And oh, I missed good. that. The only problem with with it was because the eye in the cartoon, the eyebrows are like up here, so big. So yeah. he had painted, uh, you know, foundation or like some skin color, and then drew on or whatever the eyebrows up here. But the thing was, I could still see the skin colored eyebrows, and I was just like, yeah. that is distracting me from your fake breasts, sir. Right. Because uh, anyway. also, Betty Boop has huge eyes. Like, I, I would think yeah, he'd have yeah, to, like, paint bigger eyes. Something. Yeah, I don't remember. Like, like, when you close their eyes, that's the pupils. Wow. I, it's, it's weird, because I remember it was one of my nighttime movies for years, but now it's gone. Uh, yeah. She's, she's gone. Yeah, yeah. I used to think about it often, but that's that's not for us to talk about. Anyway, so uh, Todd Kipps <laughs> we thing. We can't talk about Betty Boop. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> So that's what it was. You were like you, and there was another a young, another young actor, maybe a Jessica something. And yeah, uh, yeah. So we were. It was Haley, I think. Haley, Jessica. Haley, I mean, Haley come McClure. on, man. That's yeah. exactly Kevin it. Norman, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, sorry, Haley. Shout out uh, indirectly. Shout out <laughs> I hope she's doing well. Shout out to Haley. Um, but yeah, no, that that was it, man. Um, it was years ago. But I, that actually brings me to the thing. When did you actually get into this business? Do you can right. you I want to drink so, this warm cup of water that looks like coffee? My throat's a little have, weird, have, so s- sorry. You have a warm yeah. cup of water? Oh, because you're warm, sick. Not sick. I just woke up today. Uh, I went to bed at four forty last night, and then the better half had a screaming terror where she kind of left the bed a little bit and she just reached so you can imagine so you're sleeping uh with a lady or whatever and then like it's nighttime and you fall you're just falling asleep so it's 4 45 in the morning and uh and i scream and then a hand reaches from not the bed <laughs> for you like the first thing you do right is like mother i was a blue belt in taekwondo i'm taking someone Certainly. out and then it's and then it's like a little hand and you're like oh right there's a woman attached to this yeah come on back in bed what the hell is wrong with you but no i just woke <laughs> up and i sneezed twice and then my throat's hurting but i think i'll be fine when this is done so all right hurry the hell up <laughs> i'll be, I'll be fine when this is done i've never heard as well wa- just warm water as a remedy i guess okay, i'll tell no. you what the next thing is this is I'm a so milkshake sorry. I, I, and it look how gross it is <laughs> it's so <laughs> so I I can't have that on camera. What? What? Okay, sorry. You asked me a question. I got distracted by your beverages. Um, we I forgot. I, I got into it. So I. Yeah. So in addition to all of my other privileges, my mother is also an actress. So uh, that's how I kind of got into it. She was um, one of the two people I think she was in Christmas Carol at Theater Calgary when I was very young. Okay. Uh, and I don't remember what role she was. I think she was one of the two people that come and see if Mr. Oh, Scrooge wants to make a donation. Money. Yeah, right, right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, so come, she comes at the top and tails. So yeah, yeah appear, certainly. Yeah. And then, yeah. well, thank you so much, Mr. Scrooge. Because <laughs> one of them is Scottish. Um, and I also had a few of my, like, personal friends in the show, like in the Young Company cast with all the kids. Mm-hmm. And they were having fun. And I was like, oh, man, Sam's up there. That's pretty cool. Like, uh, you know. But my mother was, like, the person that I, in my kid brain, was, like, the happiest person that I knew. Like, the most joyful and bright. And then you kind of, anytime I hear her talk about the show, she gets, like, so apt. So my all the kid lizard synapses in my brain were like, that thing causes a lot of joy. So I started getting well, into that so i auditioned for i had one year left where i could audition for tiny tim and i didn't get it and then i i tried two years in a row to get turkey boy which is the the that would be nice on a resume yeah i know (laughs) and i didn't get either of those but then the person in the audition room they were casting for the hockey film that filmed here a gazillion years ago uh, chicks with sticks um I think that I think that was like Chantal Perron and and some other people. I'm not sure. Okay. okay. But anyway, then I met the casting director and kind of got an agent. And then my first thing was uh, grade five. I was in the Ron Clark story with Matthew Perry, and Very it's nice. not a thing that I bring up often. It's cool that I got to act with Matthew Perry. However, 
in the scene, and I think you could still find it on YouTube, but please don't search. <laughs> there was a point. Oh God. Uh, I play, there's there's a kid, Matthew Perry walks into the new school that he's teaching at from just coming from a school that he saved. Mm -hmm. Then there's a kid standing in a garbage can and that kid's like, teacher said I have to go out with the trash because I can't learn anything. <laughs> and, you know, I think I said the line's fine, but I Wait, imagine... were you the trash can or the kid? I was the kid in the trash can. I'm just thinking turkey boy to trash can, but you went turkey boy to <laughs> kid That's right. in trash can. <laughs> it's just, it's I'm just wearing bad, a man. garbage bag. Yeah, you're just hugging can. his legs. <laughs> Um, You're doing so good, Bobby. All right. <laughs> Stay still, though, because we are filming. <laughs> the, I think the reason I got hired is because I, I looked insane. My uh, mom used to do school residencies with kids. So they would like go to a school and do like a week-long whatever Robert Munch, Dr. Seuss play and then perform it at the end. And I came with her one time, and there was this girl. I was like grade four at this point, And she had her entire head shaved except for one long braid. And I thought that looked so cool. And I went, I'm going to do that. But I didn't have the length of hair to do that. So no. I, there was a while there where I just had, uh, my hair grew back and I just had like this insane rat tail, like <laughs> bad, bad. And then for a short film I did before that, I had vanilla ice lines in the side of my head. So I look like a mess, which is why I think I think that they hired me. Of like, <laughs> what is this rat of a child? Get in the trash can, rat child. Oh, anyway, man. so then it kind of went from there. <laughs> Amazing, uh, humblest <laughs> of beginnings, man. But you know what? If you did get Turkey Boy, I think you would have just like it'd been coke and hookers, and you'd be out now. You'd be spun out. You'd be, you'd be making <laughs> your gonna... comeback. You might be making your comeback. <laughs> That's right. But guys, on a very special talent talk. <laughs> Please, Griffin Cork is share all. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, my free, it's my free Britney story. Oh, my God. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> no uh, one looked that story. up, please. Sorry. No, this is going to be So, listen, I saw, uh, I, but I did actually end up seeing something of yours from when you were a very young person. I, I don't know how old you were, but I'll tell you what. I can't remember the name of it. But, okay. So, it'll be good. This is a great story. Uh, but there's a ton of people. <laughs> good start. Yeah. A ton of people from here who worked on it, like behind the camera. I remember uh, Rick Garbett and uh, Jonathan Jaffe and all these types of people. And so what it was, it was about a, it was about an old, uh, an older gentleman who was a, uh, a, a ski, what was it? What I wrote it a water skier. A water skier. There you Whoa. go. And that dude, of course, was, he was the smoking man, right? Yeah. Uh, from the X-Files. Yep. So like man from X-Files. She's like, that part is amazingly cool. And then, but then when I, I, but, th but then when I watched it and then you get to the credits, you know how like a lot of your friends make films, but like, like, you know, some very modest kind of films mm -hmm. and you get this thing where the credits come up and it's like shot by Jeff, directed by Jeff, starring Jeff and his friend, you know, yeah. Jeff made the bit. And it was one of those where I just saw this dude. I think I just saw the names like too many. And the last frame, spoiler alert, he's an old man. He water skis. And at the end, he's just face down in the water. Yeah, and I laugh my ass off. Not what it's meant to be, but again, I'm <laughs> you, 20 years asshole. removed. Yeah, exactly. I'm That's smoking, man. How dare you? Story. It's just like <laughs> this old man. He tried water skiing. He was good at it, but then you know he's old, and then it's just him flat. There's something about that which is so comical, dude. That it's a very cartoony. You know, it's like an, at the end of Wiley Kai, you just see him splattered. Um, but anyway, congratulations on that part. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so I will say, I am blanking on the name of the smoking man. William B. Davis, I think, is something oh, God, like that. I, don't know. I never watched The X-Files, man. I've watched three episodes of The X-Files, and they were the worst, best ones. It was the one where they had the Johnny Mathis song and, like, the inbred hillbillies who, like, uh, are cannibals. There's the fluke man, so I can't use outdoor toilets or indoor toilets. Um, I'm just going to get a bag <laughs> one day. We're going to come back to that, I think. <laughs> We are not. Uh, so, yeah, I've only seen, like, a couple uh, because the better half uh, really loved the show. And mm. so it's just one of those things where, you know, uh, you get in competitions with your significant other. And right. uh, and so, she like you know, if she likes something, I'm just like, I hate that. Do you know what I mean? I hate, that, just, thing. I, I hate that thing. Yeah, I'll watch no, it. No, no, my watch. taste is good and I hate your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, We're on the thing. internet. I looked it up. It is William B. Davis. The one oh. thing I will say is he was he was he was reaching his age even at, at filming, but all the tricks he does on water skis, he was He's like doing really doing like which is yeah. even impressive to me. I was like 14 and I was like, 
way to go, Willie. Like, like he, I, I mean, I can't do any water ski tricks, but he was kind of rocking it. Uh, no, no, I'm sure it's amazing. And I'm sure he's great. It's just maybe I saw his name in the credits too much. And then it was just that, that, it's just that final scene. It's just, you know, the worst part of me found that amazing. <laughs> who gave you this hosting job? You're a bad <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not a great host, to be fair, either. Anyway, speaking I'm of that, a good time. let's, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> Hey, let's get to some questions, man. Um, speaking of old people, I want—I I, I did want to uh, talk about. I wanted to talk about the documentary for a second, if I could. Sure. Can I talk about Oma for a second. Yeah, can we? Can we? Can we? Which apparently, it, what is coming out December seventh? Is that right? There is a uh, there is, is a, a screening uh, from it's it's uh, with a festival in town here in Calgary uh, that I I That's only a fun way of saying it. About. Is that yes. how you mentioned Jessica's last name? Yeah, that's how she pronounces it. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit out that first part of the show. And then it'll no! just be this and people who are like, what? What is this nonsense? Did we miss something? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's called Third Action Film Festival. And it's about people in like the third act of their life. So it's like focused on like seniors and, and their stories or or films by seniors, I think, is also one of their things. Um, oh, that's so not they to be confused do, with the Hindu film festival where it's just 1,000 acts. Right. Because after the yeah, third, you just. <laughs> sorry, go on. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Griffin, you said never talk about religion. I'm sorry about that. Bro. <laughs> yeah, well, people love that, you know, on Talent Talk. Yeah. That's why they come. <laughs> it's. <laughs> Sorry, man. It's um, yeah. So they do monthly offerings of screening because their festival is in the summer. Um, and I submitted to their festival, and they kind of went, well, "Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely still consider it." But do you want to show it in December because it's pretty timely because it still kind of references mass culture and COVID. So, sure. um, but uh, it's what I need to make clear is that it's very much not about COVID. That's not what I set out to do. It's only about my grandmother. Um, yeah, so that's it. There's a screening with Third Action on December 7th. It's on Showpass. I think tickets are somewhere between 5 to $8. But if you know me and... Oh, they don't like that I'm saying this. If you know me and you just send me a message, I'll just send you a Google Drive link. That's also fine. Wow. Um, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say, if you mentioned Talent Talk, never watch it slash Griffin Cork, uh, you right. get a discount of 20 to 100%. <laughs> Here's right now, uh, we're announcing ticket giveaway on Talent yeah. Talk. <laughs> um, so how long, how long is the documentary, by the way? Uh, it's about 48 minutes, I think. Uh, that's that's a, the running time. We were kind of doing it around that, like, hour network time with commercials. We also made a 10-minute little BTS making of thing, and I'm very concerned that it's better than the real documentary. <laughs> the the Oma behind, like, behind the scenes, frankly, is a lot, like, punchier a bit. She got, she gets... She got pretty nervous when the camera turned on and we eventually coaxed some stuff out of her, but the right. BTS stuff is pretty, there's like a minute of it of, cause we interviewed my mom as part of it. Cause it's, it's her mother. Sure. And we just, there was a whole, it was a super cut of like, we would just ask her normal questions. Like, so when did your mom first start going to theater? And she'd start bawling. Like there's just a super cut of my mom crying and getting <laughs> mad. Like, I'm sorry, I didn't No, I'll, just hold on. I'll answer the question. It's good stuff. <laughs> What's the question again? Ask me. Why did you ask me? Damn it. Wow. Um, she should be running this show. Um, <laughs> that's what I want to see. That's what I want to get out of people, man. Just uh, pure emotions. <laughs> right. Good, bad, other. Who cares? Yeah, you it's gotta get uh, just a slow it. train wreck that I, you know, that, uh, again, you know, it makes me smile. Old dead people. So um, <laughs> And Hinduism. And, no, that doesn't make me... A, Oh, I said smile. I thought make me laugh. If I said make me laugh, then definitely not. I wouldn't have made that joke, a, I don't think. Two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so so the documentary, I can just touch upon one more time, uh, a little bit more. So it's about your grandmommy. And uh, is, is her first name Sally or was my research team uh, terrible? What's uh, Sandy. But if my you call research her Sally, team, she'll probably respond. Well, that might just be the hearing. She'd be like, oh, right. What was that? <laughs> right? I don't like, know. How. Leave it on her age. Just trick her. Yeah. No, I said but, Sandy. <laughs> nice. So um, she's she's she started making masks, and then she just started yeah. giving them away. And the crazy part is, this is pre-COVID, right? Mm -hmm. She just had that. She was like, I think something's gonna happen. 
it was she was listening to the radio and she was hearing the word pandemic but it was like in reference to like other countries like when it was mm -hmm. like to kind of just circle started circling around the uk and right. uh, asia and they uh yeah i mean she spent time during the polio epidemic right so she was she's already she was already kind of like spidey sense up so mm -hmm. she started making masks and i think my mom was maybe like a little supportive of just like, hell yeah, you do your thing. But I think the rest of my family, including me, was like, that's not going to happen. Mostly because I didn't want it to happen. And I was like, no way it's going to get that serious. And then, of course, it did. And she's right. And we should just listen to our elders. And she, yeah, so she started making, eventually, there were some like theater designers and costume designers around the province that would just like donate fabric. Uh, and then like uh, her granddaughter would come and like help her cut the little wire and like thread some elastic. So there wasn't really like an overhead necessarily. It's it's kind of turned away from that now, but it's it's kind of on her own dime because she gives them away uh, for free. And then the the impetus is like, sure, I'll give you this. And then you can either donate to your favorite charity or you can donate to your local, uh, favorite local theater company. Because mm -hmm. like one of the first things that were hit very hard were small businesses and small theater companies because they rely on the live event industry. And she's a she's a stark theater aficionado. She's she's easily one of the most theater going people that I know of. And my mother and I work in theater, but she's she's seen nine hundred and seventy three shows in the last ten years. So she started wanting to just make nine seventy three of like a fun little goof. Mm -hmm. And I think last week she passed like four thousand or something. Like it's she's, she's just got to go to a lot more shows. Yeah, she's just like burning through sewing machines. I think she's on her third one right now. She's like wow. cooking them. It's yeah. And so I I made the doc because I knew for a fact she's very bad at taking any kind of acceptance or recognition. So I kind of made the doc of like fuck you, people love you here. Like the first thing she says when she introduces herself is she's like, "Hi, I'm Sandy Mose and I'm not important." That's like one of the first words out of her mouth, which is a crazy mindset. Is that you need to preface that don't care about me. Please don't care about me. So I made the doc of like almost just like a no, you no, no, yes, you are. <laughs> it's really how it started. Oh, that's amazing, <laughs> man. That's amazing. And not just to tell the story, but to also have uh like a time capsule to have have this moment sort of captured, even if it's just for the family. Uh yeah. because um good hosts always talk about themselves. Here's the moment. Please, please, uh, please. So, uh, so I, grandparents, forget about it. I don't have any grandparents anymore. Uh, parents, I don't have any. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's, it's been too long. I don't have parents uh, either. But there is this video that exists. It's on uh, VHS. I gotta convert it to something better. But um, okay. there's this videotape of my dad taking some friends out to a cabin, and he's the one because it's it's new technology, right? He had this handy yeah, cam, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And he's videotaping this, so it's like thirty minutes, uh, forty minutes long, and it's him just videotaping them as they're enjoying this scenery and all this stuff, kind of newcomers to the country and whatever it's in BC. And there's one moment where he pans by this, uh, this, uh, this big uh, window, but the reflection on the window, it's like him, you know, open shirt, fuck hair out to here. Yeah. Camera being yeah. Like, so, and he just kind of, and it's like, dude, I don't know if it's four seconds long, but I watched that like, three times a year yeah, <laughs> to, to totally. see that moment and, and hear him talk as well. But yeah. So I think it's a beautiful thing. It's it, 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 it right on the head. My, my, when I finished showing it to my parents, they're both like, we get this forever. Like this is, mm -hmm. this is our family thing now. And I didn't even really think about it like that, but I was like, yeah, I haven't really been keeping like physical photos. So this is kind of like, my photo mm -hmm. album of my grandparents that I get to show to my kids like that. Right. It's, it's, it's uh I tried. Yeah. I tried telling people. I've tried telling uh, new, new, uh, new families. Uh, you know, it's great. Yeah, videotape your child. You know, his <laughs> unboxing of this bullshit at Christmas, like whatever. Sure. But I'm telling you, speaking as the child, turn the camera on yourselves because unless he's the worst human in the world, he's not going to want to watch this. Yeah, he's going to want to watch you watching him do this. That's that's the a really good point. You know what I mean. Um, so yeah, yeah. I try and tell every new family, just like, dude, it's great. Yeah. Have your baby pictures, but they don't, they, they will never care about baby pictures. Like, no wow. one is going to care about baby pictures. Do you know what I mean? Jeez, or that's a really good point. Well, all right. Uh, that's for your next documentary. Uh, <laughs> yes. 
Just give give the camera to the baby. Yeah, that's right. Oh my god, what's that? Yeah. It's like Cloverfield. <laughs> the aliens are attacking the city. Exactly. Oh man. So uh the family stuff, man. You're thick with the family stuff. Um can, can we I I felt I knew you were doing one podcast, but I feel like you're doing more than one podcast. You want to talk about that just for yeah. <laughs> a second yeah, while I yeah. drink my weird milkshake. Your warm your warm milkshake. Well, it's a little cooler than my warm water. <laughs> they um yeah, I host a podcast with my mom that we started in when it was like full, full lockdown. So this was like May of 2020, I think. Um, May of 1979. May yeah. of May of 1863. Yeah. And uh, it's called The Breakfast Dish because it's my mother and I. Uh, she used to have the series where she would just like take people. She loves breakfast. So she would just take people to breakfast that she knew or didn't know or like a, a student that she taught and is like just graduated and is trying to break into the community. Like it was a, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people know her, she would just like take a photo, like talk to them a little bit, write a little bio and then post it on her social media. And like, that would just be like, Hey, this is a stunt choreographer that just got into town. Uh, here's a little bit of what they've done. You should hire them. Like just that kind of stuff. And then oftentimes it wasn't even about work. It was like, and they love ducks. Um, so we, we were we workshopped it a little bit with Verb Theater, um, and with they had a social media theater festival before the pandemic that was just planned as part of their season, which was super interesting. And then we turned it into a podcast. So yeah, we, it used to be the mandate for like the first two seasons was just to kind of raise some kind of awareness about all of the live stream performance stuff as as theaters are still trying to make work um, mm -hmm. because they're. You know their their senior subscriber base probably isn't like tuned to their instagrams right so stuff like that and then um i also i am doing a DD podcast with my dad it's a live play dungeons and dragons thing because i got into it with one of my buddies on the show diego stradle he introduced me to it when we were in university together and then i kind of was talking about it with my dad he's like you're playing DD," &D? and i was like yeah he's like i played like second edition D D, and he like came up from the basement and he had like notebooks and like old old like crunchy <laughs> like very very meticulous stuff and he was in a guild in college with a few actors around town uh called the mages of the order of the silver ribbon they called themselves that no no G women need a apply yeah that. oh no yeah. i bet you the day they uh i bet you the, the night they came up with that it was just yeah <laughs> Absolutely. There were a few ales in. <laughs> yeah. They're like, uh, hey, someone pause TJ Hooker. Uh, let's, we came up with that. Actually, how old is your dad? <laughs> he's, he's getting into his late 50s, early 60s. Late 50s? Sure. Oh, it was totally TJ Hooker. Yeah, I totally <laughs> yeah. was. Yeah. Sorry, like, babe. Hey, no more sex Heather. tonight. This is the Time one to talk Heather about Locker. my guild. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Cyclist Guild. Let's be honest. Okay, no, good. <laughs> um, I love how all these things, which were so not cool when they were when they started you know like yeah. 10 years after they started 20 years after they started and they had all these um uh i don't know man these, these all this baggage you know you're like i know what a dmd person is and looks like and they've yeah. all kind of come around you know we were talking about comic books uh before the show guys that's not right. for you that was just for uh Griffin, myself <laughs> and, and and jessica private. yeah we uh <laughs> I'm bringing back Jessica Calgary, man. Why? Why? why I like why, the callbacks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, that you'd never share these things with normal humans that you actually wanted to interact with. You know, you just have the one friend, right? And uh, and you you talk comic books or you talk D and D or whatever. And just never. And if someone was trying to talk to you about that, yeah. like like, hey, man, I, you're a weekend friend. I'm at school. These are the people I'm trying to impress. All these people I hate and hate me. I'm trying to impress them. Do not talk to me about uh, uh, James Kirk's middle name. And it came and and it, they never had it in a TV show. They had it on a cartoon. It's Tiberius. Don't do yeah. that to me. Don't do that to me at lunch. Don't do that to me. Do you know what I, mean? I, I think I, I, I think everyone kind of has to walk the balance a little bit of like staying true to what uh, gave them their success, even if it was like a minute kind of culty success. Mm -hmm but then also making it a little bit more accessible to get into popular media. Like, I think a large reason that D&D is kind of making its resurgence is because the fifth edition of the game is, like, really simple in comparison to, like, 
second edition. The I mean, okay, I'll talk about D and D literally all the time, but the one example for sure. Podcast. Is, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> so shut up. They. It used to be basically how you figure out if your sword hits somebody. In in second edition, it was called Thaco, which is two hit armor class zero. So it's like a number. So your Thaco would be like seven, and the dice that you roll had to be below or above and add that number to hit zero. And it's like, what the fuck? They were very smart people. (laughs) They just totally. Yeah. But in this fifth edition, in, in fifth edition, their armor class is 17, and you have to roll higher than 17. And that's it. Which is like, like it's those tweaks that allow, you know, when you see Vin Diesel playing Dungeons and Dragons, it's because it's been put into that edition, right? And so, I think same thing with comics, right? Like when when they started doing like a cinematic Did you just universe make fun of movies, Vin Diesel, I would Did have you? never. No, okay. have you seen him play D anD D? It's amazing. He's in the he's in his Vin voice the whole time. I'm gonna uh, I'll drink an ale. Like he's it's crazy. <laughs> Look no, it up. Okay, the cinema- Alan Talk Watchers, look up Vin Diesel playing D&D. Not during the show, but, you know, or just pause it. Or pause um, it. The, the cinematic universe thing, like, I, I kind of feel like the last serious Marvel f- film was the Hulk, the Norton one, and Norton's just, he's amazing. Whoa. And it wasn't yeah, a great okay. film, but that was the last proper marvel superhero movie for me and then really? everything after, and, and then when uh josh whedon sort of took over and everything and then he started making these i i refer to some films as being forrest gump do you mean where forrest mm-hmm. gump was this incredibly expensive incredibly well loved very vanilla you know like it would you it, 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 you'd be hard pressed to find someone who hated Forrest Gump. Yeah, you know I mean? it was there was just something nice here and there's something there and oh we're gonna we're gonna do a soundtrack but let's put thirty songs in it you know like it was just that type of thing and I kind of feel like I do know that it made Marvel what it is and I know it's made people like everyone come to the thing right. and I know it's ultimately good it's just not what it kind of was and it was so funny yeah, it was just yeah. like that was the moment at, at hulk it was like okay we're done with this serious stuff because it's comic books and it's dumb to make them serious let's do this other thing and right you know there, there was some there was something i saw floating around of like the idea of making a um logan-esque film about the very first spider-man like a toby Maguire kind of logan film and just showing like exploring it that way and that's super interesting because i i i wonder I, I agree that the Marvel Marvel movies are a lot like lighter than like what had, what DC has tried for, mm-hmm. but I also think when like the first Dark Knight came out, that took the world by storm, right? Because it was a new way to explore that kind of story. I think in 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 yeah, there's not a there's not as many guaranteed successes, and it's mm-hmm. it's also why I like watching um like old detective movies. Where if the 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 kind of gumshoe detective gets in a fight and kind of gets his ass kicked, right? Absolutely. Like he's still he's still good at stuff, but he's gonna get <laughs> a broken nose. Well, yeah, that's the thing. He's still being uh, he's still being a prick in the moment. To I me, mean, he's yeah. still being like, yeah, right, guy. And then he's just getting his ass kicked. Look, I wanted to talk about how do I pronounce the? Uh, is it Numera Films? Did I just do it? Yeah, yeah you got is it. That it? Numera. Yeah. Now, did that? What was the uh, the first things that you would uh, oh god when you tried to use a credit card or something in a store but it wasn't a credit card you could use a bank card do you remember were, were those machines called new Numer- where did you come up with your name I swear they were like Numera somethings but maybe not I don't remember maybe I, just made I, up. I buy it. it it sounds something like numerical so I I would understand if it was the bank machine thing. So where did the name come from, and what do you do in that? Pr- it's a it's a production house, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a small little okay. production company here in Calgary. I joined the company a little bit late. I wasn't one of the founding members, so I couldn't tell you where uh, the name came from. Okay. I should really know that, I'm sure, but I'm I don't. sorry. I'll edit. I'll edit this part out. <laughs> it'll okay. just say. It'll just. <laughs> It'll just it's, say um, I'm involved in that company, and then you'll say it'll cut from me saying you're involved in that company to you saying I'm sorry. That, that'll be the I'm best. Sorry, man. <laughs> it's um, yeah. I'm I'm uh, I'm I would I guess my position would be like I'm the producer there. The three of us kind of all make the production happen, and then we kind of fill in our individual roles. So Morgan, 
Um, Morgan Armstrong and Joseph Wright were the founding members of it. And Morgan falls into the directing role. I usually act. And then Joseph is our kind of in-house cinematographer. Um, so those are kind of all of our positions. Joe's kind of moving away from producing, but that's kind of what we do. Okay. And, congrats. and, and was, um, um, was the Abracadavers under that banner? Where there was Is uh, Numera Films the guys who made that? Yeah, so we, uh, and, and in fact, even Oma technically was as well. Oma, the documentary, is, is okay. also New Mara Films production. We we brought on a, a, a producer named Melanie Banyak, who lives in the same community as Oma, which worked out great. Um, but yeah, Abracadavers is a New Mara Films uh, uh, production. That's also, that's, Abracadavers season one is kind of how I got involved with New Mara, because I knew Joseph funny enough, from a theater drama camp that we both went to when we were like 16, when he theater still camp. wanted to act. Love yeah, it. it was Arts Trek at Red Deer College. Anyway. Shout um, out to Arts Trek and Red Deer. Shout out to RDC. <laughs> they, um, uh, and he called me up and he's like, hey man, we're doing a Sate film. Like, do you want to come do it? And I was like, sure. And I, so I, it was about, it's called The Contract and it was about a guy who uses his three wishes of a genie to just like get a date, <laughs> which is tough. <laughs> Wasn't that one? That's just one uh, wish, man. Yeah, it, it was something like he asked for like a nice suit and then some money for a dinner and then for the genie to come on a date with him, which is a little messed up when you think about it because the genie has to. You anyway. Have to. Yeah, wow. Okay. Um, and Morgan was there, so we met. And then he kind of called me and pitched the idea of a kid whose mom just died in a hair salon chair. And then he goes into his full, like, OCD depressive state. Um, but it's a comedy, so do you want to come to it? And I was like, sure. Um, <laughs> And then we shot the pilot. Movie. We did it's season one. a road one. movie comedy. Yeah, that's right. It's a road trip uh, movie about mental health. No, um, just finished season two now, right? It's just mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah, we got uh, we the first season we did was Story I Tell Us in the Calgary Film Center, and then the second season we just got funded with the Canadian Media Fund. So we wrapped that late August. Congrats, man! Thanks, <clears throat> congrats, man. Congrats! This was a money, blast. Money, money, money. Uh, I love it. It's nice to step it up a little bit for sure. Like to have to have a little bit of federal funding so you can rent yourself an actual camera rather than just shove GH5 on anamorphic lenses. Um, <laughs> you're like, oh, these seats got cushier. How do we oh, we have donuts for the seats now in the, in the, right. in the van yeah. or in the whatever it was, whatever vehicle was. <laughs> but where the hell did you guys? So second season, uh, where did you shoot that? Is it like a bunch of little towns or like what? What the we because or can you we, tell me or can you not tell I me? can I for sure okay. I can they okay. you so just the don't first want season to. was was very road trip heavy so we shot okay. in like 14 different cities like in all whole bunch of like so Calgary Cremona Red Deer so a lot of travel budget um and so this season for story reasons but I think also for budget reasons we were like let's pick like two spots so we filmed in Calgary at like Mountain View Bowling and like the Calgary Water Treatment Center um yeah. and then we mostly shot for like three weeks at the like historic um john scott ranch which is like 10 minutes outside longview which is like an hour outside of calgary um but that's like like we were we were filming right beside like billy the kid set build and like legends of fall legends of the fall and we we filmed at the mansion that was built for a movie that I don't remember the title of, but it's basically, we just used the set that was already there because season two kind of follows like, it's a very like X-Men Academy. Like they kind of get the kids who just got their powers now have like, okay, and now you need to control yourself. So we just meet a lot new, a lot of more characters. Well, wow, sweet. And uh, plans to do a third season? I think that's the hope. Like we have, I think when we finished the first season, we had the first like five seasons at least bibled out like narratively. Um, but I also know that the Numera team really would like to do a feature film before we keep going with series just to just to try our hat at that. I find a lot of the times when you're approaching distributors and sales agents, one of the first things they ask for is if you've done a feature. And it doesn't matter if your series is the same amount as a feature film or longer. It's a nice kind of litmus test I've found. So we'd like to get it done, I think. Okay. I'm going to do that thing uh, which hosts do on shows like this, which is casually, casually uh, drop, hey, if you need a brown guy of a certain age, 
Call <laughs> you're someone, all, call someone else. Call someone else because I'm busy. No, no, no. Uh, doing we this did, goddamn show. We almost did a film where I was a moody little rich Artemis Fowl type, and you were my kind of bodyguard driver. And I thought our scenes were going to be pretty good. That film never saw the light of day, but I was really looking forward to it. Your name was Carson, maybe? Yeah, I don't. Oh, that does sound right. Uh, but you know what? Here's fun, here's a funny thing. It was. Uh, um, that's one of the many, many, many projects I've done, or you know, whatever, where I've gone yeah. to the writer or or whomever, and went, "Can you just cut all these lines <laughs> of mine?" Really? Cause, yeah, because I remember going to to uh, the director or writer at the time, and I was like, "Hey, have you ever seen Breaking Bad? Do you remember Mike, that character, Mike? You remember how he doesn't say anything?" Yeah, just make that me. <laughs> make him that. Yeah. Oh, my God. I've done that so many times, man. And apparently, I don't know, I don't hear other actors say that. Because all, all the actors who are, you know, like uh, most of my friends and peers, they 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 try to write extra crap. And they're like, right. oh, isn't this nice? Wouldn't it be better if I was on film for one more minute? For yeah. whom? For whom would that be better? Do you mm -hmm. mean so I'm always trying to cut my stuff, man? Just like I, I, I do not hear actors being like, Let's cut most of my lines. That's definitely not what I hear. <laughs> Mostly. Well, one, because, you know, if you have an expressive face or whatever, or you have a certain presence or something, you're doing a lot of work, you know? Mm -hmm. But of course, it depends on the character. And that character, I believe, could have been strong and silent. And just right. like, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I have done that on at least seven productions. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, seven. I'm referring to okay, seven is so many. Seven. <laughs> Seven is look. I actually pulled it down. I've probably done it on twenty productions. <laughs> um, so I guess the worst, the we, worst, hired, we hired this Chinese guy, and he boy, he sure hates want to act. I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He wants less screen time. I think he's I nervous. Say less I guess. screen he's time. I didn't say less screen time. I just said less but words. By virtue, if you're saying but, less lines, you'll have less screen time. Yeah, whatever. Um, hey, man, we've hit 45 minutes in this. Oh, my God. And I, I know, I know. I and haven't actually, said anything of note. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about every damn thing. Uh, I talked about D&D for five minutes. Yeah, you did. You did. And I talked about TJ Hooker for a while. Uh, <laughs> for, for longer than it is acceptable, I think. Sh shout out to Red Deer College. Uh, there was that. Shout That's out to a, Vanessa. Uh, am I allowed? Was it Vanessa or Jessica? I don't remember. Damn, Vanessa, Vanessa? I, think, I, say, I think I said Vanessa. I think I said Vanessa. I went, no. I, but you said Jessica in place of Haley's name. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Hey, uh, right from the top, when I was uh, introing you, which is one of the worst things I hate, uh, is, is, is that moment where it's just you and you're like, what do I say about this person? Okay. Um, I casually mentioned that we're friends. And then I felt like I should, I should, uh, Go back and revisit that. Am I allowed to say that? Can I yes. say what? that we're friends? Of yeah. Oh, okay. Good. 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 I was is a that, little worried. Are you filling time, or is that an actual concern you had? No, I just needed to get to forty-six uh, seconds at and forty-six bye. minutes. <laughs> <and 50 seconds. laughs> oh man. Um, no, no, I'm not filling. The whole thing is filler. Do you not understand? Look, what we do, and I'm pointing. <laughs> Who are we doing this for? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing this for you, and you, sir, you are doing this for me. That's Perfect. what's happening. Um, God damn it. You know what? I'm going to go to my standard questions. These are questions that are not meant for you. They're meant for someone like you. Sure. I've asked a lady. I've asked a gentleman. And now uh, this. And I am neither of those things. <laughs> hey, what's the next What's the next gosh darn challenge? What is something you have? What, 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 what are you looking forward to? What are you going to try? Because it seems like you're doing every goddamn thing. I, the ch the next challenge, I like that question. I would say uh, uh, I'm at producing wise, I'm trying to move away from funding things purely through granting organizations and bring and kind of go down the third party or private investment uh, uh, route, which is, uh, I, so I'm just trying to soak up as much as I can about that. I'm trying to do it without having to re-go back to business school, and we'll see if that actually works. I don't know. Um, but I just the the minutia of that, like how do you how much do you schmooze? You have to be honest with what you think their return on investment is gonna be. What what's gonna 
all market data is already out of date because it's market data, which means <laughs> you just read what it was. So right. like the stuff like that is really interesting. That's a whole other world, you know. That was that's that's, that's kind of my next. challenge right now. So that's in the producing angle. Um, I do want to touch mm -hmm. upon that, but I'd like to see if there's anything uh, through directing or acting that you're also looking forward to trying. Is there any kind of thing you want to? Because oh, I, I feel like you're directing like a you're directing like a kids thing. Uh, kind of, kind kind of. right? Or maybe it's not a kids thing. Yeah, no, no, no. It's uh, there's a it's a it's candy a small cane, candy cane kids. You got candy it. Candy cane kids. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The, research um, team that's the wife she's like look i'll just look up his facebook and i'm like you're not on facebook i think that's a conflict <laughs> and then she's like say candy cane kids and i'm like but i don't in what context she's, it's nice. gonna help you oh she, it'll she really help you that? once she totally did I oh that's research? very sweet what about me says i research Jesus i don't Christ. know it's the glasses yeah probably uh, <laughs> candy cane kids <laughs> yeah i don't i don't have a um I, I don't have as strong as uh, an urge to direct as I do with the other two with acting and producing, but sometimes you just find yourself in a spot. Um, so the company here called occasional notes, and it's a little, it's a Christmas show that we filmed last year uh, to sell to like uh, corporate events. And so you, so you, you know, you just play at their Christmas party mm -hmm. and then they're doing live versions of it. So they're doing like a 50 minute version of it at the Bella at MRU. And then they're doing a roving version of it at the Calgary zoo. Um, and, you know, and there's also, I think, a difference between directing live events and film. And so exploring that world, I would have, I have more experience in film than I do in theater, but they kind of took a chance on me. So that, that goes up in a few days and uh, the, the cast kills it. I didn't have to do a lot. So in the, in the sense, like, the, you know, it was, it's a remount of a show, but then also they, they kind of came correct with like their lines and choreography and stuff. So it, while, it, while it was like, challenging for me just in terms of getting my confidence up like you know what you're talking about they they like the whole process wasn't a challenge it was very fun so i'd like to explore directing a little bit more i don't know i don't know how much like, i don't think i'll be doing a feature film anytime soon i in terms of acting i'm i'm kind of coming into an odd spot of getting like i've, I've started receiving casting calls for like 30 to 40 year olds which is very interesting because because for a while there, I'm in a weird. I was in a weird spot of like, once I shave, I have a very cherubic twelve year old face, but I'm six three. It's, it's so a tall kind of sixteen an awkward, year old. I figured. Yeah, like I look like a kid that had a bad growth spurt, like a sickly, like a sickly child. <laughs> um. So I, now that I've started to kind of grow up and get some facial hair, I'm kind of growing into my height, but I don't feel like I have the life experience or the gravitas to be like. I'm 38 and I know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? So, dude, that's just acting. I just pull know, it off the page. I don't know. Lord. Yeah, I guess. It's all playing pretend. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Hey, there's yours. Uh, but you're allowed to. I more. didn't even I didn't really answer your questions. I'm sorry. I just puked no, out fine, details. Man. And now, oh, no, no, it's fine. I the, the the producing thing, you might have to go back to business school or just mm -hmm. take this tip. When you're like, I've got to be honest, let me stop you there. I've got to be honest with the Bad. investor on that, right? If, let me just rewind that, My slap God. you, and start you again. <laughs> Crazy. I can see we've we we're we're we've gone very long, very I'm long. I'm so sorry. No, I didn't even get to ask you about. Is that a blanket in the back? Uh, yeah. The red. Oh, I love it. Is it is it? It was it just for negative space, or is it usable? It's I if I remember, I've had this couch since I was a child. I brought it into my apartment here. I grew up on this couch, and I think there's a stain over there. So that's where the that's what the blanket's for. Well, I'm sorry we mentioned it. Um, well, I didn't even know that I you could stain fake leather, but you sure can. <laughs> oh man, look, it was a it was an absolute delight uh, talking to you. It was likewise. I'm gonna bring up a picture uh, because you didn't send us anything. This is worthless. There you go. It's a picture of a camel that I drew, and I'm taking it off the screen. But just know That's, that I'm. Fully... I, I'm sorry. I, let's let's be honest with the audience. I did send you that. <laughs> That's the only thing I sent. I sent you That's six true. copies of that. Yeah, you did. Uh, I tried moving them so they would animate a little bit, but you know, I got a little. Uh, I ran out of time. I ran out of time. So <laughs> sure. sorry, everyone. <laughs> I was meant to look for. Uh, I was meant to look for uh, something to 
put up, but I didn't. Listen. No, I, I you know what? I kind of like that we didn't. I'll still send you the things that you need besides oh, yeah. the stuff to talk about. But oh, I, please. I, I do like the kind of more casual conversations. I really appreciate that. Has this been casual? Because I've been doing Kegels through half of it. It's up to the <laughs> audience to figure hell. out what. <laughs> That's what the milkshake's for. Yeah. Now I'm feeling pert. Pert and strong, like I can conquer the world. Um, pert. Wow. No. You, right? you did get here in 1963. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Long before my parents met, they were like, <laughs> some, someone just mentioned my name. Um <laughs> Listen, man, you hang out for a couple afterwards. There's this uh, dress down period, uh, okay. which uh, is usually handled by uh, Gary, where he just basically apologizes for what I've done. But uh, I won't be doing that. Perfect. Um, and I think I think we've hit the limit of the show, man. We've hit Let's the limit. Um, I might just chop out this part, you know, and see how that goes. <laughs> for the best. Let's do it. Also, it could go out just like this because later I'm helping a friend uh, audition for something big in Toronto. So that's going to be my, my, most of my day. There you go. Listen, man, thanks again for taking time out of your crazy busy schedule and talking to us, Griffin. It was absolutely my pleasure. Griffin. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay. And guys, uh, thanks for watching Talent Talk. Probably going to be here next week. Uh, Gary's going to be here. He'll do things more appropriately. Um, with another Hopefully with guest. a guest that responds to the requests of the show and sends the things that they're supposed to. <laughs> this was great. Thanks, man. I'm going to end broadcast. Bye, world.